Hello beautiful souls and thanks so much for tuning into this pick a card reading. It has been a while since I last recorded a pick a card reading so I'm very excited about this today. And I've also decided to do a little bit of a change. So I just noticed that I spent a lot of time just editing all of my readings because I really made sure that every time I made a pause or I said, let's say, a, a wrong word or I uh, misspelled something, I edited that part out and it just took forever to edit all the bits and pieces. And so now I decided to not edit my videos at all or just edit them to the minimum. So please bear with me as I am shuffling the cards or as I am thinking or as I'm contemplating because uh, I really feel that this is much more empowering to really just intuitively speak what is being, uh, what is coming through and also, yes, it's helping me with less of editing, so... <laughs> Alright, so I didn't um, prepare anything for this reading and I was really told not to put a specific theme or like not to have a specific theme for this reading but the only thing that I was guided to do was to put an alchemical principle for every pile. So we have pile number one with sulfur, which is the soul. Then we have pile number two with mercury, which is spirit or the mind. And then last but not least, we have pile number three, which is salt which is the body or our light vessel. So we have sulfur, mercury and salt. See which pile draws you in. You may choose based on the crystals or objects. This is a golden chipped raisin disc. Then we have another raisin disc with a small crystal. And we have the green jade. So again, see which pile or which alchemical principle you're most drawn to. As usual, you will find the timestamps in the description box and I'm going to be seeing you in your reading. Hello, pile number one. So this is your reading if you have chosen sulfur with the golden chip uh, raising disc. So let's see what we have. I'm being drawn to use this pile. Inner self, thank you so much for tapping me into the energy of pile number one. Inner self, thank you so much for channeling through me. What messages are there for pile number one? What messages are there for pile number one? Here so, what messages are there for pile number one? All right. I'm going to lay the cards first before I'm channeling. In yourself, what messages are there for pile number one? And we have the Tree of Swords. All right. So let's see, inner self, thank you so much for tapping me into the energy of the collective of pile number two. And it's very interesting because the first card that popped out is the tree of pentacles. And the tree of pentacles has everything to do with collaboration, with collaborating with others. But in this case, since the principle that you chose is sulfur, it really has to do with collaborating with all parts of yourself on a soul level. 
So there is really this strong feeling of soul alchemy coming through. And if we think about the principle of sulfur that has everything to do with ignition, with igniting things, starting things, making things happen, it is almost like the spark that sets things in motion. And it's very interesting because this is also very much reflected in the cards. We have a lot of fiery energy. We have the Queen of Scepters, the Queen of Wands twice. And we have the Two of Wands, which is very interesting because it almost seems like you are in this process of alchemizing, of alchemization. Like it's really there's this strong feeling of soul alchemy coming through. And it is really also interesting to see that we have the Queen of Wands in reversed before it is upright. So it really feels like you are in this process of realigning with your inner values. But it almost feels like you are recollecting fragments of your soul. And by this reassemblance, maybe even of your DNA, like there is also this feeling of DNA healing taking place, you remembering fragments of your soul's soul uh, and maybe even past life, memories coming up, or there is this general feeling of, yes, gathering all the aspects of who you are, merging them into one and re-emerging in a renewed state of being. And this is really soul alchemy at its finest. So there is really also this sense of, yes, with the, um, with the Eight of Coins, there is this feeling of making connections. It's almost about weaving your life experience, but not just this life experience. We are really talking about life experiences from eons of time and uh, from different planes of existence, like really maybe also you are connecting with your multidimensional self because there is really this stepping up of your light. There is really this stepping up of, yes, you embodying your light because the Queen of Swords is also about, uh, the, sorry, the Queen of Wands, it's also about embodying our light, shining our light, shining our light for others to see and embodying our divine sovereignty. And we can embody our divine sovereignty by remembering all aspects of who we are, by recollecting all the fragments of who we are and merging them into one, merging them into this present moment. And this is really what soul alchemy is. We are alchemizing all these, let's say, perceived fragments of ourselves. And by binding them, we are really, yes, emerging in this renewed state. And I am being called to pull another card to clarify the Tree of Swords. Inner Self, why do we have the Tree of Swords? I'm hearing betrayal. All right. All right, so whenever we are talking about soul alchemy, it is, of course, also a very intense process. Because what does it mean when we are awakening our DNA? More light is flowing into our helix, into our starlight helix. This is what I like to call our DNA. It's basically a helix of light made of starlight particle, particles. And these are really the starlight seeds of wisdom, like the light codes that encode all of our soul's memories, like all the memory imprints of who we are is really, yes, encoded in these starlight seeds within our starlight helix. And as we awaken this starlight helix, which really means reassembling our starlight helix, that can be an intense process because what happens as we reassemble our DNA or as we reawaken the, 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 the latent light codes within our DNA. It follows that we are remembering maybe past life traumas or it follows that the emotions tied to past life traumas, not just in this dimension but also in other dimensions, they are coming up to the surface so that they can be healed. 
and with the Tree of Swords, maybe there have been um, emotions of betrayal, but I'm more so really being taken to uh, Atlantean times with the uh, Six of Swords, but also off-planet things like when we are tapping into our multidimensional selves, it really follows that, yes, maybe the pain connected to these places is coming up for alchemization and is coming up to, yes, to be released because we release emotional energies and we heal our DNA by feeling all the feelings that are tied to, yes, to occurrences on a multidimensional level. And then, of course, we have to be mindful that everything happens simultaneously. So that's why we can really tune into the experience of one of our multidimensional selves. And it's really interesting because with the Six of Swords, I'm really being taken to this energy of the magician, of the witch and of the wizard. And it's very interesting because, yes, with betrayal coming through, like there has also been a lot of betrayal in, let's say, medieval times. For example, when there were the witch trials, when we talk about the times where magic was forbidden or where witches and wizards were persecuted, there was a lot of betrayal in the sense that to protect ourselves, to protect our life, we had to say that, oh, I'm not the witch, she is the witch. Or, you know, there was a lot of betrayal in that sense of, yes, trying to save our life, not being persecuted for our magic. And it's very interesting that, yes, maybe there are these feelings coming up so that they can be looked at, so that they can be alchemized, and so that you can step into your magic, so that you can be confident in expressing your magic without needing to hold back. And this is really what it means to step into our divine sovereignty, to really shine our light unapologetically, and to really embody our magic, to share our magic without fearing the heartbreak or without having this subconscious fear of being betrayed again or yes there is this yes there is this release of this resistance in embodying our light and in sharing our magic and this is really what is happening also on a collective level i feel not just necessarily on you personally but i really feel that collectively we are really stepping into our power it is really yes by realigning with our inner values that we are shifting from, yes, almost this internal process, because the Queen of Wands reversed is also about the internal process, like through this internal work, this inner work, maybe even shadow work that we are doing. It is really about, yes, stepping into our power. And this happens again by reassembling our DNA, by reassembling our starlight helix and gathering all these aspects so beautiful but i yes i still wanted to say something about um yes the collective trauma like it doesn't necessarily need to be that you specifically have been a witch in medieval times but it's also that there is this collective trauma of us stepping into our power that needs to be transformed so even if there are these feelings of resistance in sharing your magic or in embodying your light. Know that this is really like we are healing this trauma on a collective level and we are all in it together, like we are all doing it so that everyone can step into, into their power. And if you are stepping into, our, into your power, you are doing it for your whole lineage. So that's why it can be an intense process. Like, of course, there can be a lot of intense emotions coming up, but when we master this, and this is also about soul alchemy, when we master this soul alchemization, we are really almost liberating our entire genetic line. And so that generations to come can step into their power without fearing persecution or without fearing betrayal or without fearing all the negative emotions that come with expressing our light so this is very very powerful it is really also about yes stepping into our magic that is the main message so
So let's see what else we have. Inner self. What other messages are there for pile number one? Excuse any background noises. What other messages are there for pile number one? We have the Queen of Cups in reversed. What messages are there for pile number two, one? Sorry, number one. We have the Tree of Wands. All right, sorry, my phone stopped recording. <laughs> See, I set the intention not to edit too much, but I still have to do that somehow. But yeah, <laughs> let's get in, let's get back to the reading. All right, so again, we have the Queen of Cups reversed, we have the Tree of Wands reversed, and we have the Lovers. Yes, it's very beautiful because with the Queen of Cups, I am immediately being taken to all the clair abilities. So there is this sense of strong clair sentience coming through. You might be really an empath, you might be really feeling feelings on a very deep level and I also feel that you are very much connected to water. Even if you are not a water sign, there is this deep affinity with water. But when I speak of water, it's not necessarily just the element of water or emotions, but it's really the cosmic waters. We're really talking about the, the interconnectedness of everything in the omniverse. So it's really about, yes, again, finding the connections between apparent differences, like I'm really being made to feel that you have this higher intelligence that comes from your connection to your soul that allows you to see the interconnectedness of everything. And this is really what helps you with the soul alchemy. And it is really also what helps you to step into your magical abilities and to shine your light, to shine all the aspects of your soul because you intrinsically and inherently understand the connections between things. And I'm really being told that you have this high capacity of pattern recognition. And it's not necessarily like for some of you, it is really that you see them, but for others, it is really that you feel certain things. So it's almost like you know things without knowing why. There is also this sense of claircognizance coming through or just in general having this intuitive feeling or this intuitive knowingness that you just know. <laughs> you just know because you see the connections. Even if you don't understand them consciously, you really understand and feel these connections on this emotional and intuitive level. And that's why you're very much connected with your divine feminine, like also this high priestess energy coming through because you are so connected with your inner realm. While many are very much focused on the outside realm, which is very good, which is beautiful, because in the end the reflection, the um, outside realm is a reflection of the inside realm. But you're so connected to the inner realm, also with the Queen of Swords in reverse, there is really this sense of you connecting with your inner light and also you having explored the inner realms. Like, um, I'm really being told that maybe you are doing meditation, maybe you are also into lucid dreaming or Akashic Records reading. Like, it really seems that you have explored your inner realm very good. Like, you really traveled the inner realm in maybe past lifetimes. Maybe if it's not, maybe if you don't feel like it in this lifetime, you have definitely done it in other lifetimes. But since you have already mastered it in it, since you have already mastered it in previous lifetimes, you most definitely will also start to explore these inner realms through meditation in this lifetime. And this is again really about soul alchemy, about weaving all these aspects of who you are 
into this present moment. And it's really interesting because with the three of wands, the energy that is coming through, it is almost like this doesn't happen out of effort. Maybe you start maybe you started on this journey or you embarked on this journey of alchemizing your soul, of awakening your DNA, of stepping into your power. And at the beginning it might have seemed like a lot of work, like a lot of effort, like maybe you needed to force yourself to meditate, maybe you needed to force yourself to do yoga or it was more of a strife, it was more of an effort or maybe there were a lot of resistances. And it is really that you, through this process of soul alchemization, you are transcending these resistances. And also very often I'm being, um, I'm being called to share a personal experience. Sometimes, for example, when I started to record these readings or when I started to share my gifts by creating my first YouTube videos or doing my first readings or offering my first healing sessions, I had such a deep resistance in doing it. I mean, I knew I had the ability, I knew I was able to channel, I knew I was able to conduct this healing um, session, I, I, I knew I had the skills and I knew I, I've mastered this magic in previous lifetimes, but still I had this strong resistance and I just didn't know why. Why do I have such a strong resistance? And, and I know that it's, it's so nice. Like I know that I love doing readings. I know that I love exchanging ideas with people. I know that I love offer healing sessions. But why do I have such a strong resistance? Like what is keeping me back? And it's really that these resistances, these can come from, like these happen on a multidimensional level. And most of the times it's not even ourselves. Again, I'm, re I'm being taken back to these witch trials where it's really that, yes, maybe these resistances come from this deep, deep, deep collective trauma of us not being allowed to share our magic. And that's why it's really important to be kind to ourselves. So even if we feel resistances, it has maybe nothing to do with us or, yes, it can be really ancestral traumas that go deep, 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 deep down the spiral of DNA and we are, yes, transforming it. So it is very important, I'm being reminded that it's important to be kind to ourselves and to be gentle with ourselves and to always be aware that we are healing generations of karma, we are healing generations of this, of trauma that are happening or have happened on a multidimensional level. So that's why when we are wanting to step into our power and if we still feel resistances, it is okay to feel all the feelings. It is okay to maybe take a break. That's why I even take, took a break from posting videos. I took a break from recording readings because I still felt that there was this resistance that I needed to take a look at, that I needed to transform in order to start offering my gifts again and start sharing my magic again. And it's, yes, it's very powerful and the process is sometimes very deep and there can be a lot of shedding of skins, a lot of deep emotions coming up and it's okay to cry. And we are allowed to cry, we are allowed to show our emotions, we are allowed to show our vulnerability because that's, that's what is, that is what ultimately makes us stronger. It is not about forcing ourselves into a certain structure of how things should be or it's not about yes needing to fit into a certain belief structure or, or a system of society it is really about yes unapologetically shining our light and not needing to yes to be limited in any way, not needing to be restrained or restricted in any way. And it's okay to think outside the box, it's okay to do unconventional things and it's okay to explore our magic, it's okay to explore uncharted territory. Because we are the ones who are paving the path, we are the ones who are weaving the web of our life experience. And this 
only happens through experimentation and exploration, which is also the symbol, like which is signifying the Tree of Wands. It's about exploration, experimentation, expansion, expression, ex, everything that is expressive, that like it's to the outside, that is shining our light. And in this process of exploration and experimentation, without any restrictions, without any restraints, we can really connect to our innermost self. And this is really what all this soul alchemy is about. This is perfect. It's so synchronistic. I love it. We have the lovers as the last card, which is really exactly what we've been talking about in this whole reading, about soul alchemization, about weaving all the aspects of who we are into this present moment, about realizing that we are all of our multidimensional selves, that we are all of our ancestors. In fact, we are the entire universe. And the more we allow this knowingness and this state of consciousness to come in, the more we can connect with our light, the more we can connect with our magic. Because, for example, when we are offering readings or when we are offering healing sessions or when we are, let's say, expressing our magic, it is not coming from an ego perspective like this is not coming from our ourself it's not coming from this persona this this i presence this this uh, this human incarnation it is coming from a higher intelligence it is coming from spirit and when we open ourselves up for spirit to flow through when we open ourselves up for all these multidimensional aspects of who we are to work through us, then it's a completely different way because then I am surrendering in the trust that when I am conducting a healing session, my ancestor is taking over or my higher self is taking over or my spirit guides are taking over and I am not conducting the healing. I am simply a channel for spirit to flow through me or for my ancestor to work through me and this is really this game-changing paradigm shift that is taking place it is not us that is doing the work it's not from it's not coming from an ego perspective because when we are thinking of ourselves from an ego perspective this is where the doubts come in or the worries come in or the resistances come from but when we allow spirit to flow through when we allow our multidimensional selves to work through us, then it's also them, then it's actually them doing the healing, them creating the magic. And this is really surrendering into our light and allowing more of our soul to flow through and embodying more of our soul into this light vessel, in this present moment. And it's also very interesting, I'm also being guided to, to share a... Uh, an experience that I had. So the first time I offered a healing session, the first time I did a zero point healing for a friend, I was still in training and it was really the first time I did a remote healing. Um, we started with tuning into the space, with really connecting to a space of silence. And then I started to connect with the field, the energetic field of my friend who was in Italy while I was in Greece. And then we did the healing and uh, later on we had a conversation about uh, our experiences, about what my friend felt and what I felt. And it was so interesting to hear that um, the first thing that my friend saw as soon as I connected with her field, she saw this Egyptian pharaoh that was present with her in the room. And I was so amazed to hear this because this means that when I was conducting or when we were opening the space for healing energy to flow through, it was not me conducting the healing, but it was my Egyptian ancestor that was helping me with facilitating healing energy for my friend. And this happened because I allowed my inner self and my spirit and my star ancestors, like my, the entirety of my soul to flow through and to conduct the healing for my friend. And this is because I kind of get, got, got out of my way. I, I, 
I laid my sword down, I, I took a step back and I really opened myself up for spirit to come through. And this is really what it means to alchemize our soul. This is really what it means to, yes, it's so perfect, the lovers, I, I can't say it enough. It's really about merging and gathering and weaving all these aspects of who we are into this present moment. And this is really what it means to be in divine union. In divine union with the divine masculine and the divine feminine within. In divine union with all the higher realms in heavens, in the heavens and the earth in this present moment. So it's really the marriage between heaven and earth, the marriage between our individual, individual soul and the universal soul. It's the marriage between source and the star within our heart. And it's really magic and alchemy at its finest. Like, wow, wow, wow. I so, so, so love this reading. And I feel, I feel really aligned. I feel inspired. And I feel that things are flowing again. And yeah, so this is the message. Um, I really hope you resonated with this reading. Uh, please let me know in the comments if you did and also if you feel like support, supporting this channel um, please share this reading with your friends or la like, comment and, and subscribe. It really helps me to expand uh, the reach and so that more people can uh, tune into this message and thank you so so much for tuning in. I'm sending you all my support, I'm sending you all my love and I hope to see you in the next reading. Hello, pile number two. So this is your reading. If you have chosen the beautiful raising and casted uh, crystal. <laughs> I don't know which crystal this is. I would tell you if I knew. So let's get straight in. You have chosen spirit with Mercury. So let's get in on yourself. Thank you so much for tapping me into the energy of my pile number two. What messages are there for my pile number two? Yourself. Lust reversed, which is the strength card. I'm gonna lay the cards first. And we have the Five of Cups reversed. In yourself, what are the messages for pile number two? What are the messages for pile number two? We have the Knight of Swords. I'm being drawn to use the other deck as well. So, oops, am I using these? No. Oh, yes, actually, we're using these. We have the Nine of Wands. We have the Hanged Man in reversed. And we have the Six of Wands in Reversed. Alright. Another card? Okay. <laughs> now we got it. Alright. So let's see. Thank you so much, Inner Self, for tapping me into the energy of my pal number two. It is very interesting because as I'm tapping into the energy of this pile, of this collective, there is really this clear energy coming through. And it's interesting that I say this because it feels that a lot of cards are upside down. It feels like there is a lot of processing that has happened. Because right now, as I'm tuning into your energy, I am more being made to feel this energy of the Knight of Swords. And the Knight of Swords is all about this mental clarity. It's all about, yeah, seeing things clearly, seeing things from a higher perspective. And it's very beautiful since you have chosen Mercury and Spirit. This is exactly what I feel the King of 
swords is signifying it is really this connection to spirit and it is really this connection to almost seeing connections because spirit is what connects everything in the in the universe it's really this web of light is really this the breath of spirit that is connecting all the aspects of who we are or connecting all the aspects in the cosmos and it is really by having this higher perspective almost looking at things from a soul perspective that is bringing clarity on many things that maybe you have been going through so i'm really being made to feel like the energy that is coming through is that it's almost like you have done a lot of shadow work also with the nine of swords maybe you have been releasing a lot of deep-seated fears or you have been exploring your shadows you have been really yes doing deep inner work doing deep shadow work and right now you are in this place of who it's like <laughs> let's say the worst part is over or like you've gone through the storm and the sun is rising again and now in this place of clarity in this place where your mind is clear where you are connected to spirit it's almost like you can revisit these experiences or these places and then look at them from a higher perspective whereas when you were inside of all of these things no matter if it was like fears or struggles or whatever it was you were almost like inside the water but right now you are stepping out of the water stepping out of the emotions and looking at things from a higher perspective in the sense that you are more detached from it whereas when you were going through it it was really maybe even feelings of depression coming up or feelings of yes uh, yes the five of cups is really about uh, deep emotions about feeling dissatisfied about feeling discontent but it's really that through this perspective shift that is happening or through this newer way of looking at things this renewed way this renewed higher viewpoint you are able to transcend this conflict and it's no longer a conflict it's no longer a fight but you're really seeing the light in all of it you are really seeing the the divine in all of it and you are realizing from this higher perspective from this soul perspective that everything is part of source that light and dark is just part of the same coin spirit and source and the universe is both light and the darkness it is boy both pleasure and pain and it is really about yes integrating all these aspects almost like surrendering into this knowingness so that you can move to this higher perspective so that you can really embody this soul perspective and it is almost about yes surrendering to the fact that everything is part of source that even if there is pain even if there is discomfort it is all part in us stepping into our light and connecting with source and healing ultimately and i'm also being told that this process that has been happening was a crucial part in your becoming because it is almost that through this emotional purging or through the exploration of your fears you have redefined what it means to be successful so maybe before you have based your ideas or your beliefs of what it means to be successful based on maybe societal constructs or what your maybe your family wants you to do or maybe what society wants you to do or what society kind of like almost asks us to do or almost like yes i wouldn't say force us to do but yes <laughs> you, i hope you get what i mean and it is really about releasing these fears connected to these yes almost these constructs or these mind constructs that are not really sustainable or that are not really serving us or that are not really making us 
feel passionate. It is really by reconnecting to our inner light, reconnecting to our inner values and doing the, that deep inner work so that we can realize that we are not successful if we are let's say success it doesn't success doesn't mean that we let's say gather a lot of wealth or success doesn't mean to stand above others but being successful really means to yes doing the things that we enjoy doing to connect with our passion to connect with our heart and to connect with yes with doing the things that we enjoy doing and really through this process of doing this deep inner work you have reconnected with your inner values and maybe you are re-emerging with a renewed sense of who you are and what you're wanting to create in this lifetime and really about releasing the fears that it is still possible and maybe this is exactly the fear that you have been releasing that let's say it is possible to be financially abundant while doing the things I love it is possible to make it happen let's say because you know that it's possible since you are connected to your soul since you are connected with spirit because our soul our heart doesn't fear it is only the mind that is fearing and now we're coming back to the mind again it is only these constructs of the mind that are not trusting or that are enclosed in this specific structure or in this specific thought pattern or belief system that is almost constricting or constraining the infinite wisdom of our soul. And it is really about, yes, releasing all these thought patterns that are not serving you so that you can fully step into your power and really look at things from this higher perspective. And I'm being called to pull another card, asking for clarification. On the Nine of Wands, oh, we have two cards. So, yes, we have the Five of Swords and we have the Two of Pentacles. Yes, that's exactly, um, that's exactly what has been coming through. So, it is really about laying our sword down. And it is really about, yes, letting go of all these mind constructs. Like the scene that I'm being made to see, like that I'm seeing this scene in my mind's eye. It is almost like we are in this maze, okay? And so the walls of the maze are our thoughts or our belief systems. And it is almost like we are trying to get out of the maze. We are trying to, to reach, let's say, the end goal. We are trying to, yes escape the maze but since there are so many walls since there are so many thought constructs it's almost like we're losing ourselves in the maze we're losing ourselves in the labyrinth and it takes a lot of effort to get out of the maze and this is exactly what the nine of wands reverse is representing like this effort like it feels like we have to push forward it feels we have to go there and then go back and then go this way and the other way it's just a striving things are not really flowing effortlessly things are not really going the way like we maybe want it to be and these are exactly these minds constructs like the walls of this maze but when we are laying our sword down when we are releasing or transcending these limitations of the mind it is almost like the walls are falling away and we are really seeing this blank canvas and we're really seeing that oh actually this whole maze it, it has a lot of potential like I don't have to run away from it I don't have to escape but it's actually a blank canvas for me to paint for me to create for me to allow myself to explore so that's why when we look at things from an ego perspective, from this mind perspective, then of course there might be worries coming up, there might be fears coming up, because we are so caught up in this maze, we are so caught up in this mind construct 
that is not really serving us. But when we drop the mind, when we drop these constructs and these belief systems, we see that it actually holds so much potential that again we don't want to escape but we are wanting to play we're wanting to fill this canvas with colors and we are wanting to really connect with our passion to create art and to create to create magic in conjunction or in collaboration with spirit and this is really what it means to lay our sword down and ultimately surrender it is really about surrendering it is really about yes surrendering also in this playfulness because there is a lot of playful energy also coming through with the last card it's almost like this um, the energy that is coming through is this golden lion this golden lioness also this very very strong heart like I'm really being told you have this strong heart also Sekhmet energy coming through Sekhmet is like the golden lioness that is protecting her children no matter what and yes there can be fire there can be destruction like um, Sekhmet can both be Kali energy where there maybe are challenging experiences where there maybe is a lot of destruction and a lot of shedding of skins but ultimately she destroys to protect her children and this is really this lion heart which can be fierce but infinitely loving at the same time and this is really what our greatest strength is it is not coming from force it is not coming from controlling things with the mind but it is about surrendering and about trusting that everything happens on our behalf even if it's challenging and it is very interesting yes again I am being made to feel um, yes <laughs> cutting away the ego or like it, it, it doesn't mean that we have to like throw it all away of course the ego is also important for us let's say as a point of reference or it's helping us to navigate certain situations like there is nothing wrong with the ego per se but it is really about yes letting go of these limitations of the ego very interesting also Capricorn energy coming through so it's really about Saturn Saturn energy is the energy that is restricting certain things it is rather keeping ourselves in the loop instead of us going out of the loop but I'm actually really being made to feel that you've already gone through this process like there is two energies coming through some of uh, you are in this process some of you are already outside like I have already transcended this process but it is really about integrating the ego not necessarily cutting it away like the, the person without head but it's really about integrating it and almost weaving it into yes and being made to feel this flow of the yin and yang almost like integrating weaving it balancing it balancing your ego with your spirit whereas maybe before this process or in this process you were very much still in this ego consciousness in this let's say 3d consciousness but since you have done all this shadow work or since you are actively doing this shadow work you are transcending this 3d consciousness of that is connected to the mind that is connected to the walls of the maze and you are looking at it from this higher soul perspective from this higher yeah it's almost like you are not on earth <laughs> not in it not in the water not in the process not in the maze but you are looking at it from an outside perspective you are almost detaching yourself from it a little bit it's not that you're detaching first yourself in the sense that you don't want to look at it but you are not so and mo much emotionally involved in it as you maybe used to be you are really yes transcending and raising your consciousness to this higher perspective where maybe all these struggles they're no longer there it's almost like you're whoops transcended <laughs> and out of it <laughs> and it's no longer there and um, this is really this powerful process where we realize the power of spirit 
and where we get to know our mind because the mind is yes very often very full the mind is very often a full cup where it's already filled with all of our beliefs with all of these mind constructs but it is really about also emptying the cup so that it can be filled with spirit so that it can be filled with this higher perspective and that's why it is important to go through these emotions of maybe even feeling lost these emotions of maybe even feeling like not having a purpose being depressed or like feeling empty but this feeling of being empty is actually the best state to be in because we are emptying our cup so that it can be filled by spirit so that it can be filled with light so it is actually very good to sometimes be in this state of void because again then it can be filled with the light of source and we can re-emerge in, re in a renewed state of being where we are more balanced and really being taken to the four of sorts where it's about being more grounded, being more balanced, like really taking care of our emotional needs and also using our thoughts in a constructive way. Again, we don't have to throw away our mind, we don't have to scatter our ego completely, we don't have to like really turn our back onto everything, but it's really about integrating it in a balanced way and moving forward constructively. The number four is about building foundations, it's about, yes, using our thoughts creatively instead of destructively, instead of Yes, our thoughts are a blessing, the mind is a blessing, the mind is a tool to create, but it's equally important to allow spirit to co-create with us, so that it is not coming from an ego perspective, but it is coming from a perspective where we are laying our sword down, where we are emptying our cup and allowing, let's say, allowing this empty vessel, this emptiness to be filled with light. I am being called to pull one last card to finish this reading. Inner self, I'm asking you for guidance. What is the last message for my pile number two? We have the two of swords. It's very interesting because the very first time I looked at this card, I thought it was, oh, it was a two of swords. And then I tuned into like, okay, what decision is there? <laughs> so there is definitely some sort of a decision that is being made. Asking for two cards to clarify which are the two sides. What are the two sides of each sort? Yourself, what decision? Ooh, okay, I see where this is going. One last card. All right. So... Right, beautiful, love this. After this whole process, no matter if you're in it or if you're already in this Knight of Swords energy, after this process, once you are in this energy, once you have this clarity, once you are looking at your life from this higher perspective, it is almost like you are given a choice. And the choice that you have to choose or the choice that is helping you to move forward, it is really, are you stepping into your power? Are you tuning into the treasure that is within yourself? Are you tuning into the abundance that is in your heart? And are you creating out of that abundance? Are you weaving the web of your life experience? Are you crystallizing your talents into manifestation or are you playing it safe or are you allowing yourself to be limited by maybe fears or limited by the mind or are you still trying to hold on to is there something that you're still trying to hold on to that doesn't allow you to surrender and if there is still some some resistance it is an invitation to revisit these parts these aspects but from a higher perspective do you still feel that something is 
not moving forward as you are wanting it to be. So maybe it's your invitation to let go of it and to maybe look at it a month later from a higher perspective. Or is there still something that you're trying to hold on to tightly that doesn't allow you to move into this next phase where you are embodying your abundance and really also creating something out of your magic. There is also this Virgo energy coming through. When we think of Vir Virgo, it's the energy of Isis. It's the energy of the Virgin, which is the crystal weaver. She is weaving the crystal web of our life experience. She is weaving magic. She is really, yes, weaving our treasures into creation. And it is really about, yes, no. <laughs> it's very interesting. I tried to find out what the other choice was, but there is actually no other choice. <laughs> okay, sorry, it stopped recording. So <laughs> in the end, I have to do some editing uh, anyway, but it's good. Uh, so yes, let's get back. No, it's really interesting because as I am tuning into the energy of the Two of Swords, it almost feels like there is no other choice. <laughs> so it's all, so the choice, let's say, because there is always a choice, the choice is to either stay limited by these ego constructs, as stay limited by these fears, or to fully step into creativity, into our creativity in creating, in spreading our light, and to really, yes, create this web crystallizing our magic and our talents into creation or playing it safe and let's say staying within the constraints of our mind and so the only way forward is to really yes step into the unknown because as we step into the unknown it means that we are surrendering into the collaborate or we are collaborating with spirit so that we can co-create our life experience with spirit and it's very beautiful because with the tree of scepters we really have this Aries energy coming through which again is the energy of moving forward but it's also about experimentation and exploration so it is really about yes it's important or it's 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 okay that you don't have all things sorted out yet it's okay not knowing how certain things will turn out because it is so important that we allow ourselves this process of exploration and experimentation. So it's almost like this feeling, the feeling that is coming through. Sometimes the mind wants to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Because we want to see the end goal, we want to see the end destination of where we are going. But spirit won't show us the end goal. Spirit won't show us the light at the end of the tunnel because spirit wants us to explore and to maybe choose our way instead of spirit giving us the way. So the message that is coming through is really that spirit supports us with lighting the footsteps or the path that is in front of us but only until there. So we see the step in front of our eyes and we walk it. We won't see what's beyond that, but this is this experimentation and this is this playfulness. Like we see each step that is in front of us, but the rest is open to experimentation and exploration. Because again, spirit wants us to have this playfulness, to really be creative and to really figure things out for ourselves. Because if spirit would give us the whole way, if we would know it all, then it would be not maybe not fun because then there wouldn't be nothing to to let's say strive for or there would be nothing to to aim for and really this aim is what keeps us motivated and it's yes it's really really this perspective shift from fearing uncertainty to embracing uncertainty and being excited about uncertainty like what is there to find out what is there to experiment what is there to explore instead of fearing the darkness or instead of fearing our shadows but again i'm really being made to feel that you had have done a lot of shadow work and you have done a lot of processing if you are still in this process be kind to yourself and to really 
know that everything shall pass, know that everything shall turn back into light again. But really the main message is to, wow, to explore and play with spirit, to allow spirit to co-create magic with you and to really experiment and explore on how to express the treasures that you already already hold within yourself. Such a beautiful message. I love this. Oh, this really makes me so excited. <laughs> very, very beautiful. So please let me know if you resonated with the messages. Um, if you feel like supporting this channel, I am inviting you to like, comment and, and subscribe and also share this video with your friends, which is really helping um, helping this message to reach more people. And thank you so, so much for tuning in again. I'm sending you all my blessings. I'm sending you all my love. And I hope to see you in the next reading. Bye-bye. All right. Let's see what else we have. Ta -da -da -da. Hello, pile number three. So this is your reading if you have chosen the beautiful green jade. I'm gonna put this over here. All right, so let's get in. You have chosen salt, which is the body, which I prefer to call our light vessel. All right, let's see. Inner self. Thank you so much for tapping me into the energy of my pal number three. Isis energy is coming through very, very strongly. Isis is the energy of crystallization, crystallizing things into creation, manifesting things, weaving the web of life, weaving the structure of crystallization. There is a strong sense of making order, structuring things. We have, ooh, all right, the tower. Juicy. <laughs> we see what this is about. Definitely some strong energies coming through. And we have, oh my goodness, look at all these major arcana cards. Like you're going through a lot of transformation. Big, big, big shifts happening in your life, in yourself. What messages do we have for pile number three? And we have five of wands. I'm going to lay the cards first before I channel. In yourself, I'm asking you for guidance. What messages are there for my channel? Oops. We have the seven of pentacles. Messages are there from my pile number three. What messages are there from my pile? Yes, and her. There you go. Oh, I already saw the high priestess, which is actually. Oh, there you go. I have another card. Yes, oh my goodness. I'm so happy that this is coming out. All right. <laughs> so, this is definitely this. Um, Yes, this energy of uh, structuring things, of making a structure. There is a Capricorn energy coming through. It is really about, again, it is very interesting because all three piles, there was almost this overall theme of weaving things together. In pile number one, it was more about weaving or about allowing more of our soul to come through. And in the second pile, it was more about co-creating with spirit. But in this pile, it is really more about actually making things happen. Because Capricorn energy is also about, um, is the element of earth. It's the element of structure, having a certain structure. But more so, it's really about, yes, with, with Isis coming through, it is really about... Um, almost having our vision, having our ideas, but then actually crystallizing them into creation. So let's say maybe you have had <clears throat> an idea of starting a project, starting a creative project. Maybe you have always been wanting to write a book, 
maybe you've always been wanting to start a YouTube channel, maybe you always wanted to organize some workshops, but it's really about the idea that you have to take it and to really actually manifest it, to weave the web of crystallization, because what does it mean to crystallize? If we have to think of the process of crystallization, so crystallization is the opposite of diffusion or dissolution. <laughs> I Yes, I don't know the specific word, but for example, if we take salt, for example, we diffuse, I think it's diffusion, we put salt in water and it melts, it diffuses, it disintegrates. And then when the water dries, it crystallizes again. So it's really about having this thought in the mind or this idea that comes from spirit that is connected with Mercury because Mercury is all about everything that's fluid, everything that's liquid. And it's almost like taking this liquid state and solidifying it, turning it into something solid, turning it into something tangible, creating the web of crystallization and to birth it into creation. And this is really what Isis energy is about. Isis, she is the weavress of the mother matrix. She is the mother of the crystals. And that's also very, very beautiful that we have the queen of spheres, the queen of pentacles coming through. Because actually, if we think pentacles, the suit of pentacles, it's not sometimes it's called the coins which is very good but i feel sometimes it can be a little bit misleading because if we think of the suit of pentacles as coins then there is we could focus too much on the material aspect let's say on the physical aspect or like on money or let's say but if we look at the suit of pentacles as pentacles what is pentacle that it's like a, it's a star but what it is it's a pattern it's a structure it's like a crystallization. And so Isis, or let's say the mother, Isis is weaving that mother matrix. Isis is weaving that crystalline grid. And that's actually what the element of Earth is. Earth is not necessarily something physical, but in alchemy, the element of Earth is actually structured thought patterns. So when I touch this stone, it's not that I'm actually touching it, but my mind is being conditioned to believe or to think thoughts in within certain constraints. And this is really the element of Earth. It's the crystallization of specific thought patterns. It's the crystallization, this web, this grid of light information that makes me believe that, yeah, it's something, it's solid where actually it's not. And yes, it is really about realizing that there is this structure, but at the same time, we are not confined to this structure. Very interesting. We have Capricorn energy coming through, which is connected to uh, Saturn. So it's really about knowing that, yes, there is this structure which helps us navigate this earth plane, because of course I need to have the sense that I'm touching this because imagine I will be able to move my hand through it like I would not have a reference so it's important to have some sort of structure it's important to navigate this earth realm within yes our limited human senses but at the same time it's also about opening ourselves up to more opening ourselves up to spirit opening ourselves up to the help of our spirit guides and this is really this process, what I'm being made to feel that this is the tower moment that is happening with you. So this could be a really sudden shift. So if you're already in your spiritual path or like very much on your spiritual journey, it can be an outside event happening or it can be something that shakes your belief system so that you are connecting with the higher aspects of who you are so that you are connecting with what lies outside the constraints of earth or of crystallization. You are almost connecting with the infinite potential 
that lies yes outside the crystallization it's almost like tapping into the the super consciousness tapping into the intelligence of the omniverse tapping into the light of your ancestors the, the light of your spirit guides and before you're tapping into this there there needs or there, there was this need of this tower moment to happen because the tower is actually many people fear the tower because they think oh my god drastic upheaval drastic change <clears throat> but actually it's a card of transformation and if we allow the things to fall back that fall back anyway because the tower is built up on rocky foundations like it is doomed to fall and if we allow that fall then we can really open up ourselves up for other possibilities in fact for infinite possibilities because maybe before you have been limited by your mind you have been limited by this certain structure of things very similar to pile number two actually but here it's more about making things happen about creating certain things and really allowing to be in synergy with spirit allowing to really connect to the super conscious to this infinite intelligence where the realm of infinite possibilities and creating from that space weaving a new web of light from that space and it's really yes oh my goodness <laughs> i just noticed um, the high priestess yes that's exactly what it is isis energy weaving the web of your life really integrating all these aspects and also channeling information from the super conscious channeling information from your higher self i like to call it inner self because it's everything is inside of ourselves um, to really connect with this higher intelligence and to yes co-create with spirit so it's not um it's not a conflict it's not um needing to Yes, there is almost this feeling like you have this strong, strong, fiery energy. Like I really feel like you are wanting to make things happen. You are wanting to step on this fiery chariot and move forward and implement your plans. And yes, you, I see a person who is very motivated, a person who is very driven. But it's almost like sometimes there is this tendency to try to run through walls. There is this Aries energy coming through strong Aries and Capricorn in this uh, pile and it's almost like yes with the seven of um, with the seven of Pentacles it's almost like this feeling of forcing things to happen but this only comes from a place where we are not allowing the infinite possibilities of source of our spirit guides to come through because maybe we have this certain mindset again maybe you have this certain structure or belief system that things should be how we're wanting them to be or like there is yes almost this attachment to a certain outcome where we are limiting ourselves or where we are trying to push against a wall that is not yes that is not uh, or that needs to fall away and if we transcend this conflict or if we transcend this limitation then we can really co-create with spirit and really weave this beautiful web of our life experience which is really what the queen of spheres is representing she's representing the creation of our garden of life and the question here is are we yes are we planting these seeds out of a place of connection to infinite possibilities to the super consciousness or are we planting the seeds out of a place of limitations of the mind that come from the ego and it is really about yes letting our sword down and letting go of these structures which are not serving us letting go of all these limitations so that we can fully open ourselves up because it's very interesting the la the first card that um, came out was the world and the world which in all, some other decks is the universe it's about feeling complete within ourselves but also complete within the universe also reaching completion with a specific project uh, making our projects happen 
finding completion, wholeness and fulfillment with the things that we are creating. And since it's in reversed, it's almost like, yes, you have this vision, you are wanting to crystallize and manifest this thing in create into creation, but there first needed some alignment to be done. Things needed to fall away. There needed this, this, this tower moment was necessary so that you could let go of this limiting not necessarily thought patterns or like just limiting ways of doing things limiting maybe l uh, different approaches like maybe through this tower moment you rediscovered or you are discovering other approaches on how to manifest your vision into creation on how to make things happen and i'm really being called to pull another card because i love where this is going and yes, but it's so much transformation. Like I really see you connecting to all of your guides. Like if you are not very much into uh, your spiritual process, like you're, if you're still very new, like if you feel that you're still very in the very early stages of your awakening, like the transformation that you're going through right now is cosmic, it's galactic, it's like out of this world because we have one, two, three, four major arcana cards and it's really about, yes, this is very much the general theme of all three piles to, to integrate more of your soul, to weave all parts of your soul into this present moment. And we have the Ace of Wands, beautiful, connecting to your light, connecting to your power, and really taking this magical wand and making things happen out of this place of connection to basically the infinite the infinite possibilities of source because again i've already said it in pile number two like when we look at things from a hard perspective the heart doesn't fear the soul doesn't fear because the soul knows it's infinite it's undying it's eternal so that's really when we open ourselves up for passionately creating for all the possibilities there are but if we look at it from an ego perspective, then of course there are limitations. Then of course there are constraints and restrictions. And it is really about, yes, allowing these things to fall apart and building a new castle, using our power, our light and our passion to build a new palace. This time it's a crystal palace. Maybe before it was, a, I don't know, a, a small house made out of mud. But this house made out of mud needed to fall down so that you can build your crystal palace, your star temple, your, your beautiful, magnificent creation with the help of source, with the help of spirit, with the help of your inner self and your spirit guides. Such beautiful, beautiful energy, like really a lot of passion coming back. I see a lot of... I should really see your spark, your inner light being reignited after a phase of more quietness. And yes, there we have, there we have it. We have the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is really about shining your light, shining our beauty, and really, very beautifully, coming from the Ace of Swords, where it starts from an idea, where it starts from a potential, again connecting to the infinite potential and the queen of wands is really about embodying it it's almost about crystallizing it about crystallizing the fire the eternal fire of source and birthing it into shape into creation into crystallization and this is really how we crystallize our visions it is not necessarily that we have to let's say write a book or create this beautiful artwork which of course is lovely it's beautiful it's basically consciousness expressing itself consciousness crystallized in form but actually it is more about realizing that we are this crystal and we are embodying the higher aspects of who we are by crystallizing our light vessel and this is, oh my goodness, wow, <laughs> full circle moment. This is really what it is. Since you have chosen body, which I love to call light vessel, it is really about crystallizing our light vessel. What does that mean? Crystallizing our light vessel means to 
move to crystal consciousness, to Christ consciousness, because crystal consciousness or Christ consciousness is enlightened consciousness, is unity consciousness, is, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> it is the knowingness and the awareness and the embodiment that everything is one that I am a spark of source, that I am a spark of the divine, that the eternal crystal star is within my heart, within our heart. We all have the source light star within our heart. And when we embody that, then we are really this star crystal. Then we are really embodying this higher dimensional source consciousness that comes from the connection to the super conscious that comes from the connection to the higher realms super powerful so strong like such strong energies coming through and i feel called to pull one last card <laughs> i also feel it in my body i really feel this wow higher realms energy coming through like that is wanting to come through now that's why I really feel that if you are in the early stages of your awakening process, like the amount of transformation and alchemization and magic that will come through or is already happening is, wow, unbelievable. It's like I really see quantum leaps of change happening. And in this process, it is very, very important to stay grounded. Because again, as I was talking, I really felt like, almost my entire field being flooded with light codes from the higher realms, being flooded with these codes that are really triggering the activation of your DNA, triggering the activation of your spiritual gifts to come online, like there is so much being unlocked in this period or in the month and other moon cycles to come. And oh my goodness, there is a small hummingbird and it's really, really tiny. Wish I could show it to you. Maybe I can. Oh. <laughs> okay, it's already gone. No, is it still there? There you go. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> oh, I finally get to film one. They're always so fast and they disappear very quickly. All right, <laughs> let's take this as a sign. Oops. Let's take this as a sign that the beautiful hummingbird bird spirit has visited us. And what does the hummingbird signify? It's really this high vibrationality. It is really connected to the highest realms because the hummingbirds, they flap their wings in a speed that is out of this world. I've even heard it's, I guess, I'm, I hope I'm not saying anything wrong, but it's like, 80 times a second how is that even possible like it's and if not if it's, if it's not 80 times a second it's just a lot so it's really the the hummingbird spirit is really connected to the highest vibration i'm really being taken to the highest realms the the 12th dimension the, the highest dimension which are close to source and it's really about embodying this higher frequency in this light vessel and this is really what is crystallizing our light vessel really activating first the 12 strands of our dna and this is what is basically turning the rocks the rock atoms the carbon atoms in our light vessel into a crystal and this is really this process of crystallization that happens thanks to this influx of this very very high vibrational light codes that come from the highest realms into our light vessel. And that's why it is very important to ground ourselves. Because when we ground ourselves, then we are allowing for this expansion to happen. Jupiter, Jupiter energy coming through. It is really true, maybe having a regular meditation practice, which doesn't need to be that we meditate for two hours every day, but it can literally be to tune into our breath in the morning for a few minutes and this is really what allows us to be grounded so that we can channel all of these light codes and all of these energies into this present moment and funnily enough I'm being reminded of the story of uh, Isis and Osiris which is really 
Yes, the story of reassembling our DNA, the story of weaving all the scattered aspects of who we are into this one, into this crystalline light vessel. Because if we think about the story of Isis and Osiris, Isis collected all the parts of Osiris, so basically um, Set killed Osiris and dismembered his body in 14 different parts all over Egypt. And Isis collected every part of Osiris and reawakened and resurrected Osiris to life. And this is really a beautiful analogy of recollecting the fragmented parts of our souls, the fragments of our DNA and reassembling them. It is really about, yes, when our DNA, like in Atlantean times, our DNA was really high vibrational, like we had 12-stranded DNA, we were very much in tune with our magical abilities, we could very much conjure and create magic, crystallize our will into creation. But then when the fall of consciousness happened, all these light codes, they were disassembled. It's not that they were removed, they are still in our DNA, but they were simply like chaos happened. It's almost like going into a library and really pushing all the books down of a shelf and like just creating a chaos full of books. But what is happening when these energies come in, these higher dimensional energies, they are creating order in this pile of chaos. They are creating order with all these light codes so that these light codes can be activated. And this is really what Isis is also symbolizing. She is gathering all these scattered parts of our DNA, all these scattered light codes within our DNA, and, we, and she is weaving them together. She is reassembling them and birthing new life out of it. And this is very interesting, oh my goodness, because if we think of it, out of this transmutation, out of this magic, Horus is being born. And Horus is the crystal star. Horus is the energy of Christ, is the energy of Christ consciousness. And this is where Osiris is being revived and renewed and being birthed into a new state of being. Okay, wow, <laughs> I just had uh, some realizations myself, but that's so powerful. That's super, super powerful. So it's really you stepping into crystal consciousness. It's really you activating your DNA. It's really you weaving that web, reassembling your, the light codes within your DNA and activating more of your higher dimensional, high vibrational soul's gifts such a powerful energy like wow 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 okay i <laughs> i myself need to take a break because the energies are just so intense but such a beautiful reading really how beautiful i really really hope you resonated with the messages please let me know in the comments if you did and also if you feel like supporting this channel i'm inviting you to comment like subscribe share this video with other people so that this message can reach every soul who is receptive to receive it. And I'm sending you much love, I'm sending you my biggest support. Again, thank you so, so much for watching and see you in the next reading.